In this video, we will discuss the Toolspace Settings tab. Civil 3D uses styles and settings to automate CAD standards and design settings within the Civil 3D environment. Civil 3D styles and settings are probably the most important aspect of Civil 3D. Having styles and settings defined before using Civil 3D in production will make it easier for you to use it within your organization. The way Civil 3D works is that styles and settings are stored in a drawing template. And this makes it very easy for you to maintain your CAD standards or use Civil 3D with another client's standards. There are two types of styles in the world of Civil 3D. We have object styles and label styles. So let's navigate to the settings tab and let's go ahead and just look at an example object style. Firstly, let's discuss how to navigate the settings tab. It's pretty simple. Simply find the category of object that you want to work with and you will see subcategories based upon the object type that you are selecting. Let's navigate to the surface category. Let's say you want to navigate a surface style. We'll go ahead and expand it here and let's go ahead and look at the contour one and five background style. I'll go ahead and either right click and click edit or you can double click it as well and that will open up the style dialog box. Every type of object has a different set of tabs. This of course makes sense because based upon the object type that you are editing, you're not necessarily going to see the same exact tab. For an alignment style, you're not going to see contours and grid and points. So let's start with the information tab. This is the name and the description that is given to the style. The borders tab explains the actual borders of this type of style and so on. You can click each of the different tabs to actually see what each setting contains. The common tab between all of them is the display tab. So the display tab is very important as it will tell Civil 3D which subcomponents of the actual object should get displayed and what layer they are on. One thing to mention with this display tab, make sure you navigate the view direction dropdown to edit all different view directions. Most styles will have at least a plan and a model. Some will have plan, model, section, and even a profile view. These tell Civil 3D how to display the object in each of these different views. To edit any of these categories, simply click on them and navigate the layer that you would like to change. Let's look at label styles. Let's say I want to look at a contour label, so I'll expand the label styles category and then expand contour. And these are all the contour label styles in this drawing. Let's go ahead and look at existing major labels. So one of the things about label styles is that once you remember the two dialog boxes used to edit label styles, it's the same for all label styles. We first have the label style composer, which contains tabs to define the layer and object behavior. The layout tab contains the actual components that will be used to display the actual label. And every label style will have a drag state as well that allows you to define how the label should react when you click on it and pick the grip to drag it around. The other dialog box you need to be aware of is the text component editor. To access it, you will go into a specific component name, click in here, and then click this button right there. So as I said, these two dialog boxes are exactly the same for every single label style. The only unique property, depending on the label style that you go in and edit, is the properties dropdown. So if I edit this one, notice how we're only seeing three because this is a surface type label. So you can get the name of the surface, the description, or the surface elevation. If we had chosen a pipe label style, you would see a whole category and list of different properties related to the pipe objects, such as invert elevations, brim elevations, and so on. One thing to mention about the text component editor is that this is actually a text editor. I can actually type in text here as well. Let's talk about the settings related to Civil 3D. The settings in Civil 3D are a hierarchical type setting. In other words, there are three levels of settings and they start from the top and then go down into each of the different object types as well as the commands. Firstly, we have drawing settings. If you right click on the drawing file, you can click on drawing settings. If you then right click on a specific feature, you will see feature settings. Again, these settings will first grab the ones above and then you can override them with the feature settings. Lastly, you have something called command settings. Each specific Civil 3D command can actually override any of the settings defined above. Let's look at the drawing settings. We'll right click on here and click on drawing settings. 
There are five tabs here. We have the Units and Zone tab, the Transformation tab, the Object Layers tab, Abbreviations, and Ambient Settings tab. Let's just give a brief description of each of these. Firstly, the Units and Zone tab is where you define the angular units, the drawing scale, and the coordinate system of the actual drawing. If you note right here, Civil 3D is built on top of the Map 3D coordinate system, and you have all of the coordinate systems in the entire world. If you do define a coordinate system to a drawing, you can then apply transformation settings. The Object Layers tab is a very important tab to be aware of. Civil 3D treats Civil 3D objects like a block. Just like an AutoCAD block goes on a layer, Civil 3D objects go on a layer. Then the style tells Civil 3D how to display the subcomponents and what layer those subcomponents should go on. There is some really cool functionality that you can leverage here by simply defining a layer and then using a modifier like dash asterisk, which will actually act as a modifier in that whatever you give the name of the object, it'll append or prepend, depending on what you choose here, the name of that object to the layer that you select here. This makes it very easy to use the layer freeze command. If you use layer freeze and you think you're gonna freeze a subcomponent such as a tangent or an actual contour label, you cannot do that. You'd actually have to go to the layer dropdown and freeze or thaw it there. The abbreviations tab is used for geometric points. In other words, how do you like to say point of beginning? Is it POB, BP, end of alignment, etc.? And then the ambient settings are basically the design settings, such as if you were to measure a distance using Civil 3D, what's the accuracy that you want? Notice this option right here. This is telling you that there is an override down below. In other words, either in a feature setting somewhere in here or a command setting as well. You're gonna see a lot of these because each individual object type you may wanna actually override. Then if we right click on any of the features, if you go to the feature settings, you'll see that these are feature specific settings here or properties that you can actually then define here. Notice how this too is telling you it's being overridden somewhere down the line. In other words, a command setting is actually overriding the default marker style to use. You can change the settings here as well to override the drawing settings. And then lastly, of course, every command actually has the ability to override all of the settings defined above here. So if we look at the command settings, you can define the default styles and default contour labeling and, and surface defaults. But these icons here tell you these are command specific settings that you may want to define. In other words, if you actually want to have a default name that comes up every time, you could click on the surface name template and then change that default name. Let's look at the label style defaults. So again, each label style does have its own settings, but if you want to change, let's say the entire drawings default textile to let's say a common one, you could right click on here, click on edit label style defaults. You can then override any of the settings down below here. If we click on label, I can actually change this to a specific label style. Let's say we change it to this one here, click okay. And then to actually override every single one, I simply click on this and it will override every single one of those label styles to use this textile. That's a nice way to kind of get you started. And then you can go into each individual label style and change their specific textile or height or layer, etc. Lastly, let's talk about importing and purging out styles. If you go to the Manage tab of the ribbon, Styles, Panel, we have the Import Styles command as well as the Purge Styles command. By clicking this here, let's go ahead and first save our drawing. When you click on the Import Styles command, you then navigate to a specific drawing and you can then bring in any of the styles that are inside that drawing. You can pick a drawing template or a DWG file. What's great about this functionality is you can actually either override styles that have the same name in this drawing, thereby forcing your drawing to use a specific set of standards, or you can toggle on and off the different ones that may or may not conflict.